Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is Indie Fanatics, your home for indie car content with weekly podcasts and feature videos. Welcome back to the channel and to another feature video. Last time out we explained everything you needed to know about the Indy 500, so if you haven't already, check that one out. Don't forget if there is a driver team or topic you'd like us to look at in the future, comment below. But today, after he made history and confirmed his legendary status at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we thought it would be the perfect time to take a deeper look into the career of Elio Castro Neves. So as always, let's head back to the beginning. Mike, take it away. Elio was born on the 10th of May 1975 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, so maybe it was destiny that he would go on to achieve great things in his birth month. His father, Elio Castro Neves Sr., was an automobile dealer. His mother, Sandra, was a former school teacher, and he had one sibling in the form of older sister, Cachucha. Although born in Sao Paulo, Castro Neves would grow up in Ibero Preto, northwest of Sao Paulo, as the region was a strong area of growth for the ethanol processing business, and this would help his father in his work. Elio would still be educated in Sao Paulo, however. His early racing education would be influenced by his father, who owned a stock car team, who would sneak him in in overalls and a helmet just so he could watch. At the age of seven, he was given a small motorized car that he would drive round his home streets in, but would beg his dad for a go-kart. On his 11th birthday he got his wish as race car driver Alfredo Garano Menez gifted him one and he would start racing at a kart track in Sao Paulo. Despite Elio's mother's best attempt to deter him from motorsports, he had caught the bug. He wanted to be a racing driver and emulate his hero, Ayrton Senna. Despite his mother's scepticism, his father Elio Sr. was very much committed to his son's racing career. He enrolled him in a state championship in 1987 and midway through the year, Castro Neves won his first trophy and then he would sell his home in Rio de Janeiro to fund a karting team for Elio. At age 13, he would be withdrawn from full-time education to focus on karting and learn as much as he could about driving. A dream scenario for a kid but an all-in gamble from his father now it was motorsport or bust for young elio a year later he would win the brazilian national go-kart championship and this would give him the platform to explore karting abroad as he would look to enter the karting world cup in europe due to a registration issue he almost didn't make the first race until another carter withdrew with an arm injury he would finish 16th the following year in 1991, he would enter the World Cup again in France and come 25th. Not standout performances to shout home about, but the carts were far more powerful and grippier compared to the ones he had grown up racing in Brazil. But it was time for him to make the step up to race cars and the next stage of his career. Now 16, Castro Neves entered the Formula Chevrolet Brazil series, which was a racing series designed for go-karters, making a step up to race cars. He was due to race for the Arisco team team in the series, but negotiations fell through when they wanted Castro Neves to stump up $200,000 in sponsorship. So Elio Sr. made his own team spending $250,000 instead. Not sure why that made more sense, but it happened. It was a serious investment in his son, who he wholly believed in his talent. His faith would be rewarded with a runners-up finishing position with Castro Neves securing one victory and 92 points in his rookie season. By 1993, he had progressed to the Formula 3 Suda Americana series with the Amir Nasser racing team. He again would finish runner-up in the series to Argentine driver Fernando Crosseri, securing four wins and 57 points, all the while without an aerial, so there were no communications between himself and the pit wall during the races. Staying with the Amir Nasser racing team, Elio competed the following year in the Brazil Formula 3 series and again he would be runner-up with three victories and four pole positions in the eight-race season. Castro Neves had shown clear talent in his native Brazil, but as always in most sport, finances can become a huge barrier. Elio headed back to Europe in 1995, this time to compete in the British Formula 3 championship. Again, Elio Senior went all-in with financial commitment to his son. He secured sponsorship from a Brazilian bank and midway through the season sold business assets, his private company and Elio's sister's university apartment to help fund Castro Neves' junior career. The season went well, 
but again short of a championship victory as he would finish third with a solitary win at Dunnington Park with Oliver Gavin claiming the title who American endurance racing fans may recognise for his class wins at the 12 Hours of Sabring and Petit Le Mans. An also interesting name who was amongst the competing field is now Red Bull team principal Christian Horner. I think they both made the right career moves. A third place finish of the Masters of F3 and a crash out of the Macau Grand Prix ended Elio's time in Europe and the money had run out to try a further pursue his racing career on the road to F1. But Elio was thrown a lifeline stateside. An executive from Philip Morris International, the major cigarette brand, invited him to take part in a four-day Indy Lights test at Phoenix International Raceway. Despite not completing the test due to exhaustion, Elio was able to secure a drive with Tasman Motorsports for the 1996 Indy Lights Championship. He would secure three podiums in his rookie season for the team with a third place at Cleveland, second place at Monterey, and his first series victory at Troyes Riveras. A further four top ten finishes helped him to secure seventh that season, though his teammate, friend and fellow Brazilian Tony Canan would finish second. Castro Neves retained his seat for the following season, though with his sponsor leaving him, it led him to agree a deal with team owner Steve Horn that Horn would retain all prize money until Elio was able to pay him back. Essentially, he was racing for nothing at this stage, but that didn't matter. It was all about proving what he could do. And that he did, winning three races, including victory on the streets of Long Beach and a further four podiums to improve to second that season. Though Tony Canan, who was still his teammate, had also improved and claimed that year's Indy Lights crown. Castro Nevis' performances had not gone unnoticed, though, and Emerson Fittipaldi took a great interest in the young Brazilian's career, so much so that he became his manager and sponsorship finder in 1997. Elio and Tony both secured seats in car the following season, with Castro never signing for Bettenhaus and Racing. It would be a tough first season for Elio as he would finish 17th with only 5 top 10 finishes. That he would score second at the Milwaukee Mile for his first podium in the series. Though he was nowhere near the win as Jimmy Vassar dominated the race winning by over 7 seconds. Jimmy Vassar's team Chip Ganassi had expressed a desire to sign Elio midway through the 98 season as their championship winning driver, Sinardi, was heading back to F1. Team Rahal had also expressed an interest, but Emerson Fittipaldi blocked both moves, believing that Mercedes was the better engine. Castroneves would be sacked by Bettenhaus and Racing in the January of 1999 in favour of sponsored Shikeki Hattori and was signed for Hogan Racing, driving the unreliable number 9 car and the Mercedes engine Fittipaldi had back was not the best on the grid. Elio would score another P2 at Gateway that season and end up in a slightly better position of P15 in the championship but must have been frustrated watching rookie one Pablo Montoya drive the Chip Ganassi racing car to the title. Elio had become fed up with Fittipaldi's management and him and his sister tried to negotiate a drive with Walker Racing and Team Rahal without Emerson's involvement after Hogan Racing folded at the end of the 1999 season. They were unsuccessful, but with the tragic death of Greg Moore, Penske were left to find another driver for the 2000 season. That driver ended up being... Elio Castro Neves. This would lead Penske to having an all-Brazilian lineup with Gilles de Ferran driving alongside Castro Neves and it would be Elio's best season in kart to date with three victories at Laguna Seca, Mid-Ohio and his first series victory at Detroit after one Pablo Montoya retired from the lead with mechanical issues. The more experienced Ferran would go on to claim the title though and Helio would finish seventh and would be honoured as the first ever Greg Moore Legacy winner which is awarded to the driver who best typifies Moore's outstanding talent on track as well as displaying a dynamic personality with the fans, media and kart community. In 2001, Elio continued his improvement within the series when he won the second race of the season at Long Beach, leading all 82 laps of the race from pole position. He would also achieve this same feat at Detroit, making it back-to-back -back wins at the street circuit. He even led the championship for a short while before losing the lead after finishing 18th at round 14 in Vancouver and would go on to finish 4th overall in the standings. But 2001 was a significant year in Castro Neves' career. For the first time since the split, Penske had entered the Indy 500, starting 11th in row 4 on the grid, 
two rows behind teammate Gilles, the Penske boys bided their time in the first half of the race that was marred by rain delays and cautions and took a 1-2 lead just into the second half of the race. Negotiating more cautions and another rain delay with a red flag period and was able to hold off teammate Deferen to win his first and rookie 500 by 0.4838 seconds. It was also the first time in their 500 history Roger Penske's team had secured a 1-2 and Elio's wins marked Penske's 11th victory at the Speedway, with Roger describing the result as the best day of his life coming back like this. 2002 was the first season that Penske participated in the IRL, leaving Kart behind to its demise, with its future bankruptcy and collapse looming. This would be Castro Neves' strongest result in a senior championship to date, with a season-long battle between himself and defending IRL champion Sam Hornish Jr. He would ultimately lose out by just 20 points to Hornish, whose five victories to Elio's two was the difference between the two drivers. Although championship glory had evaded him, Castro Neves arguably won the bigger prize as he claimed his second Indy 500 win and a back-to-back -back victory at the Speedway. The first driver to do this since Al Onsa in 1970 and 1971. This victory was more controversial than his first though, as on the 199th lap, Paul Tracy actually overtook Castro Neves for the lead of the race. But at the same time this move was happening, a crash brought out a caution on track and the Indy Racing League officials deemed the caution had been brought out before Tracy had completed the move and Elio was awarded the victory which was upheld despite a Tracy appeal. Castro Neves' performance had caught the eye of the world of Formula 1 and he was offered a test with Toyota. Although he impressed in this test, Toyota went with kart champion Cristiano De Mata and he would stay with Team Penske for the 03 season. He again would be fighting for championship contention, being a regular visitor to the podium that season and securing two wins at Gateway and Nazareth. But with a minor collision with Tony Canan in the season finale, it took him out of championship contention, residing to third place in the standings. At the Indy 500 is where Elio would shine again though, fighting with teammate Deferen for the lead, looking to make it a record-breaking three Indy 500s in a row. He would finally be beaten at the speedway though, as Jill took that lead with 31 laps to go and Castro Neves could not find a way past his teammate. It was another 1-2 for the Team Penske though and it was the first time and only victory for Toyota at the Brickyard. 2004 started off with some good news from a bad situation after the relationship between Fittipaldi and Castro Neves had turned sour. Emo had filed an $8 million lawsuit against Elio for earnings owed due to him being his manager. The court ruled in Elio's favour and found him to have properly terminated his contract with Emerson and that he owed him nothing for the success he had achieved with Penske in IndyCar. A new teammate beckoned in rival Sam Hornish Jr. joining the team as DeFerrin retired after his 500 success, but Toyota had lost out on the power advantage and it was a fairly uncompetitive two years between 2004 and 2005 for Penske standards, with only one win in each of the seasons for Elio and for the first time in his career he had finished outside the top two at the Speedway with a ninth place finish in both seasons. In 2006 a switch to Honda engines had made the team more competitive again and Elio had a strong start to the season with a second place finish at Homestead Miami before two wins at St. Pete and Mategi, making him the informed driver going into the Indy 500. However, Indy success would not come but instead a crash on lap 110 with Buddy Rice that would see for the first time in his career Elio to not finish the Indy 500. Despite another two victories at Texas and Michigan, Elio would finish third in the championship. In a competitive year in 2007, Elio could only muster one victory at St. Pete and a sixth place finish in the standings, with the only other notable highlights securing his third career pole position at Indianapolis before finishing P3 in the race. 2008, however, would be Elio's best shot at a championship since losing out to Hornish in 2002. A fairly strong start to the season with two podiums at St. Pete and Montegi would see a season-long battle for the championship against Chip Ganassi star Scott Dixon. Despite finishing on the podium in the final seven races with two victories, Scott's six wins to Elio's two was again the difference between him winning a championship as he lost out by 17 points, as Dixon also claimed that year's 500 crown. 2009 would see for the second time in his career, Castroneves embroiled in a court battle. This time it was the IRS 
claiming that Elio had avoided paying taxes and owed $2.3 million. In a stressful time for the driver, eventually he was acquitted of the six counts of tax evasion and had his other charge of conspiracy dropped. A difficult time for Elio that saw Will Power begin his affiliation with the team, filling in for absent Castro Neves. But back to racing, and Elio came back in style. He only missed the opening round at St. Pete, but a podium at Kansas set him up nicely for his third Indy 500 victory. He started on pole, with it being the fourth of his career at the Speedway. In the first half of the race, it was a fight between Dixon, Castro Neves and Franchitti before the Ganassi drivers fell away in the second half of the race, and it would then lead to Castro Neves maintaining the gap between himself and the chasers in Weldon and Patrick to score his most dominant 500 win to date. Between 20 in 2012, he would finish fourth twice either side of his worst championship result for Penske in 2011, when he would finish 11th in the standings and be the first season he wouldn't achieve a race win for Penske, with him being only able to finish second at Edmonton and Sonoma. 2013 and 2014 saw Castro Neves secure second in the championship for the third and fourth time in his IndyCar career, losing out to Dixon in 2013 and teammate Will Power in 2014. The 2014 Indy 500 saw Elio come the closest to securing a record equaling fourth Indy 500 since his third win in 2009, battling Ryan Hunter Ray for the lead in the final laps of the race in the six green laps after a late red flag had been brought out by a crash from Townsend Bell. There were several exchanges between Ryan and Elio in the last few laps, but Ryan was just able to keep a nose ahead as he won by just 0.06 seconds in the second closest finish at the Speedway after 1992. In the following two seasons, Castro Neves remained competitive, but with no serious challenge at the 500 or the championship, he was going into 2017 season hungry to compete for the top honours again. In the championship, he would have a consistent season with one victory at Iowa and a shot at the title in the final race of the season with a victory needed and his rivals to finish outside the top three. He would finish fifth at Sonoma as Joseph Newgarden would clinch his first title and Elio would finish fourth. That year's Indy 500 saw him becoming a nearly man again, as well as finishing second for the third time in his career, losing out to first-time winner Takuma Sato. On lap 193, he was leading the race, so close to that record equaling fourth Indy 500, but Sato overtook him and it was not to be Helio's day. And 2017 would be his last full-time season for Penske. Although Castro Neves was still race for Penske in the 500 with one-off entries, his career now switched to IMSA and sports car racing. It would take Elio a little time to adapt to the series. They would secure a victory at Mid-Ohio in his first full-time season in the series. But it was in 2020 that finally, after a 22 year senior racing career, that Elio Castroneves would finally win a championship, the very least a driver of his caliber deserves, alongside teammate Ricky Taylor. This year, as Penske pulled out, Wayne Taylor Racing took Elio and Ricky alongside Alexander Rossi and Philippe Albuquerque. He was able to achieve his first ever. 24 hours of Daytona. Elio has always been a very popular driver. He has an infectious energy and personality that seems to bring out the best in people around him. A fan favourite for many years in IndyCar, in 2007 he made himself popular to the outside world when he switched from overtakes on track to silky moves on the dance floor in Dancing with the Stars. Partnered with Julianne, they got all the way to the final and claimed victory winning the public vote. Still, at 46 years of age now, he has so much energy and passion for life and everything he does, and that is why for the 2021 season, Maya Shank decided to run a part-time calendar with him, with his first race, the 2021 Indy 500. And I think we all know what happened there. After leaving the most successful team in IndyCar and Indy 500 history, Elio put in what can only be described as a masterclass for the 105th running of the race. After last year with no fans at the event, he well and truly put on a show and all those near misses, all those successes, helped him to see off the challenge from the fantastic young Spanish driver Alex Pelot to claim his record equaling 4th Indy 500 and first non-American to achieve this feat. He celebrated in trademark Helio the Spider-Man Castro Neves fashion by climbing the outer wall fence like he had done in the three victories before this year. What everyone witnessed last Sunday was history and a legend of the series and Speedway still able to pull out the very best performances of his career. At 46 years young, he ensured that everyone still very much knows who Elio Castro Neves is. 
Elio has a long-time partner in Adriana Hanau and his daughter Michaela, and family has been at the very heart of Castroneves' story. His family have all supported him from the early days, with much personal sacrifice in finance and time dedicating to supporting his racing career, but he has more than repaid them with the faith they showed in him. Often when sportsmen get to a certain age, we have a tendency to start writing them off and bookmarking them into early retirement. But people like Elio Castroneves refuse to go willingly. In the past 12 months, he has achieved an IMSA championship, an overall win at one of the hardest endurance events in the world, and a record equal in Indy 500 win. With Maya Shank, Elio has found a new lease of life with an ambitious team who has been driven by the talented Jack Harvey over the past five years. It would be no surprise at all to see Elio alongside Jack full time next season again competing at the top of IndyCar. Legend is a fitting word for Elio. Not only on track has he been one of the best drivers of his generation, but off it, he is a personality that drives for the very best and someone who will always have a special place in the heart of IndyCar fans. He may not have reached F1 like his early inspiration Ayrton Senna, but Elio has made his own legacy that we are sure has inspired the next generation of Brazilian talent. But that's it for today's video, guys. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about this year's Indy 500 winner and his fantastic career to date. And don't forget, if there's a driver team or topic you'd like us to look at in the future, comment below. And if they're new around here or haven't done so already, Stephen, they can like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. So for now, you Indy fans, keep bracing. <laughs>